Hi everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm going to be recommending you some romance books. So I should have timed this a lot better and done this last month when it was Valentine's Day but I didn't think to do that. So you're having it now and these are some of my favourite romances ever. I wasn't sure whether to just limit this to traditionally published romance, indie romance or just have them bundled together. I'm gonna mostly talk about traditionally published because they're the ones that I mostly have physical copies of, but I am gonna mention a few indie ones that I've really, really enjoyed. And then I'm gonna do another whole video on indie published romance. So I'm gonna just start at the top of the stack, work my way down, and funnily enough, the first one on this pile is my favorite romance ever. I love this book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. It is, the Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I love the whole series of this, to be honest, but this is my favourite. This follows Stella and Michael, who are my favourite couple in a romance book ever. I feel like this is kind of one of those books where, you know when people say, here are books that I refuse to accept criticism about, this is that for me, I really struggle because these characters are so close to my heart I feel. This one is essentially following Stella and she is autistic and she struggles with intimacy and sex and so she decides that she wants to hire an escort to essentially teach her what to do and how to essentially become more comfortable with sex and intimacy and so she hires Michael who is just amazing. I adore him. He is just fantastic. I love him so much. He immediately has a soft spot for Stella, you can tell, and he can see that something is going on here but he doesn't know what. And this romance between these two is just so pure. I loved it so much. The spicy scenes in this are also very good, in my opinion. I feel like it is perfect. It is the perfect romance for me. Some people say that it's a bit insta-love but I don't think so. I think this is the perfect romance and I think if you are looking for a fun romance that is a little bit different, it's got more to it than just the romance, pick this one up. It is fantastic. Next up we have got Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier and I just want to take a moment for this cover because it is one of my favourite covers of all time. This one is set in Trinidad and it is essentially following these two people who don't necessarily like each other. We've got Sharice, who is this baker, and Kieran, who is in the music industry, I believe. So essentially, the whole setup for this is that Sharice is the maid of honour for her sister's wedding, and Kieran is the best man because it is his close friend who's getting married to Sharice's sister. And they have to essentially come together and plan all these like a pre-wedding events, and obviously they have to get closer in the process, but They've known each other for such a long time and they've got this kind of dislike for each other. It's not like enemies to lovers, but they don't like each other. And the romance between these two, like the way it builds and the gradual liking of each other to kind of becoming friends and then it becoming more was just so lovely. I love the setting of this. I really love reading books that aren't set in the Western world. So having a book set in Trinidad by a Trinidadian author, I really enjoyed and I feel like it is a really really good one to read especially if you're kind of trying to get into romance I feel like this is a really good place to start. Next up we have got a series and I'm counting this as one because I loved all three if I had to pick I could make a choice but it is the Brown Sisters series by Talia Hibbert. We have got Get a Life Chloe Brown, Take a Hint Danny Brown and actual age Eve Brown. These romances are just so, so incredible. Get a Life Chloe Brown is essentially about Chloe and Red and Chloe makes this list of things she wants to do to get a life essentially. She feels like she is living quite a boring lifestyle. She doesn't go out much, she doesn't do much, she's not really rebelled and so Red decides to help her out and it is so, so good. I absolutely love this one. I loved the chemistry between these two and I just think it is perfect. Take a hint, Danny Brown is following Danny and she is, I think she's a lecturer. She ends up having to fake date Zaf 
because she essentially gets trapped in a building while there's this fire drill and he fireman lifts her out and it kind of goes viral. There's a video of it and it goes viral. Everyone absolutely loves these two together so they decide to start fake dating and it goes from there and this one is so so good. I really really loved the dynamics between Danny and Zaf. People that have read all three of these I feel like the general consensus is that this is the most popular but my favourite is Act Your Age, Eve Brown. This one is following Eve, who is essentially trying to find a job. She's trying to show, to show her parents that she can hold down a job and essentially start acting her age. She ends up getting this job at this B&B as a chef. And the whole like interview process and the way she gets this job is just hilarious, but she ends up getting the job anyway. And we're following her relationship with Jacob, who is the owner of this B&B and he is autistic and the way these two start their romance is just perfect. I love this one so so much, it's so wholesome and I really love that throughout these you get the other sisters and their partners in it as well. Like it's so nice to be able to see how the other couples are getting on, that's why I could not include all three of these in this. I absolutely love it but if I had to pick a favourite it would be Actor Age Eve Brown. Now I feel like I can't do a romance video without talking about Emily Henry and I can't decide which my favourite Emily Henry book is. I love two and they are book lovers and people we meet on vacation. Excuse the sun damage to this, I'm a bit devastated about it. So I read People We Meet On Vacation first and I loved it. It made me cry. We're essentially following Poppy and Alex who are these best friends and they go on vacations together every year. Poppy is this like travel influencer so she goes on a lot of holidays and Alex joins her for a holiday every year and we kind of see each of these holidays and how their friendship and relationship develops but we know that at some point something's happened to their friendship and they're no longer friends but whilst we are still having those like previous holidays we are following them in the present timeline where they are meeting up again and starting their relationship and friendship again and it's so nice i really really love this like i said it made me cry not many romances make me cry and i just loved it so much like the declaration of love in this really made me emotional so i really loved it and then when i read book lovers i thought this was my favorite but now after a while i feel like i've kind of switched back to people we meet on vacation but i also loved this one this one is following nora and she is like this literary agent and the romance is with this book editor called charlie and charlie is so charming in this like he is a typical book boyfriend he is great in this so essentially what happens is that Nora's younger sister wants to get away and wants her sister to come with her so they end up going to this small town and it turns out that Charlie's family are from this town and it is his hometown so it's like a small town romance element which I absolutely love but we are following these like big city characters. I really really enjoyed this, I thought the romance was really really good and I loved Nora as a character. She's definitely like a typical older sister and if you're an older sister, which I am, you would relate to her, I feel. Even if you don't have like her personality, the way she is and acts as an older sister, I feel like is so relatable, which is why I think I enjoyed this. I think the characters in this are what I enjoyed more, but the romance I enjoyed more was People We Meet in Vacation. Next up, a historical romance, and it is The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. I loved this book. I read the first Bridgerton book after watching the show, and I didn't really like it. And then I read this before the second series came out and I absolutely adored it. I loved this one so much. We're following Kate and Anthony and I feel like this is a lot different to the, to the show. I absolutely love both. But the way the relationship turns out in this is much different. The things that go down with Kate's sister in this are much different. I loved it it is so so good it's another one that i think made me cry i just love kate and anthony together and i feel like now having seen the series like series two of bridgerton with these two i love them even more i think i'm gonna reread it to be honest because it is such a such a good romance much better than the first book in my opinion i am planning on re like reading the whole series 
but I started book three and I didn't really love where it was going so I put it down but maybe I'll try and give it another go and so then I can continue on with the rest of the series. Next up another absolute favourite of all time for me and it is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This book is the reason why I know there is another Tessa Bailey book out there for me because this is the only one I have loved by her. I haven't liked the rest but this is just so so good that I know the potential is there for me to adore more of her books. This one is following Piper and Brendan. Piper is essentially based off of Alexis from Schitt's Creek. She is this like party girl, rich girl that's a bit spoiled. I say a bit, she's very spoiled. And something happens where her mum and stepdad decide to send her to her dad's hometown. Her dad passed away when she was very young. So her and her younger sister go off to this town and they are made to live there to kind of prove that they aren't just these like party spoiled brats essentially um when they first get there they are not really received well piper doesn't come across that great to the town because the town are very different to what she is used to what she is like but she meets brendan who's this grumpy fisherman and piper's nice she's nice to him at first she's she's fine but he really doesn't like her and gradually he starts to get a soft spot for her and their romance ends up brewing and I adored it so much. The way Brendan feels about Piper is top tier. I loved it so much. The spice in this one again, great. I feel like Tessa Bailey's spice is a bit hit and miss. Some people love it, some people don't. I liked it in this one. I thought it was really good, but maybe go in caution if you're not so sure. But the actual romance of this is incredible okay finally for the books that i have got physical copies of we have got honey and spice by bolu babalola the chemistry between these two characters is unmatched i adored this book we are following kiki and malachi and they are at university and kiki runs this like radio show and people start messaging in about this guy and it ends up being the same guy all of them are messaging about this same guy and it turns out it is malachi who is new to the university and what happens is they essentially end up fake dating and it's kind of to help them both with respective projects and oh, it's so good the chemistry as i said was palpable i loved it so so much and there was even a part in this that i just love in books like kiki mentions a book that she loves like a book series and then all of a sudden at one point she gets this phone call from malachi and he's like how has this happened in this part of the book and she's like i can't believe you've actually read this book because i mentioned it and he's like well yeah because you enjoy it of course i'm gonna read it oh, the romance between these two is just perfect it's perfect i absolutely adored it and i would love to reread this one to be honest it is just in Incredible. Okay, so now to talk about some books that I don't have physically and these ones are going to be indie books. I feel like indie books are really expensive to get physically, so my collection of those is a gradual thing. The first one I'm going to talk about is Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This is part of the Brutal Birthright series. It's the first book. I've read the first four books in this series and I have enjoyed them all. The first one is my favourite. It is true enemies to lovers. It is this mafia romance essentially where these two families who don't get on end up getting together to kind of help out each other against this other mafia family situation. I don't know. I'm not very I'm not very well read when it comes to mafia books. These are like the first mafia romances I've ever read. But essentially they end up having to have this marriage of convenience. It's following Callum and Ada and it is so good. Sophie Lark's books are just so fun. They're such a good time. They're so quick to get through. They are just like, you just want to know what happens. You want to keep turning the page. And this one, because it is this true enemies to lovers, I don't want to say there's a specific thing that happens when they get married, essentially. And it just kind of goes to show how much they despise one another but then when they actually end up getting together it makes it so worth it it's so so good i loved this one and then as i said i have read the first four in that series and i've really enjoyed those as well i actually really would like to carry on with the series i feel like i need to get a move on with that next is one that i spoke about 
quite a bit when I first started this channel and it is Forever Never by Lucy Score. This was the first Lucy Score book I read and I really, really loved it. We're following Remy and Brick, which the name Brick, I can't get my head around, but we're following Remy and Brick and they knew each other a while ago. Remy's a bit younger than Brick, but not too much anyway. And then she ends up going off, leaving this town and she ends up coming back and he's had this thing for her the whole time like no one can compare to Remy in his eyes but the thing I liked about this is while I really loved the romance between these two I there was also like some extra drama and this is a really long book for a romance but I think because it also had this like suspense thrilling aspect in a separate storyline it worked and I really really enjoyed this I read it so quick considering it is like 600 pages I flew through it and I really, really loved it by the end. And also the relationship between these two is like, it's one of those where it's like right person, wrong time. And then they've come back together and it is the right time for them. And it's just so sweet. Next, I'm going to talk about From Luke Off With Love. I read this recently and I adored it. It is so, so good. It is rivals to lovers, this one essentially. And it's following these two figure skaters who don't like each other and they end up having to work together and perform together so they have to get really close to each other and have to spend all this time with one another because they want to enter these championships they want to enter the olympics they essentially have to work together and be together constantly and they really don't like each other at first but they like to take the mick out of each other and they just don't get on essentially and then they end up becoming really good friends and then they end up obviously falling in love and it's just so good again flew through this one it's another long one but it's one you'll fly through and I absolutely loved it and the final book I'm going to talk about is One Week in Paradise by Anise Starr I read this at the start of the year and I gave it four stars but it's one I keep thinking about so I think I'm going to up it because it was so so good we are essentially following Bailey who has this social media scandal kind of situation happened and sort of gets cancelled and in that process like to do with that she splits up from her boyfriend and she ends up a few months later getting this invite to this couple's retreat and it's kind of like a brand trip sort of but the brand obviously don't know that bailey has split up from her partner so she's just like i'm, I'm just not gonna go but then bailey's brother ends up suggesting his friend cash should go along with bailey and it turns out that Cash has had this thing for Bailey for a really long time. And Bailey doesn't really think that he likes her at all, like even as friends. So she's a bit confused at first. But they end up spending this week together in Jamaica. And oh, it's so good. The setting of this was perfect. The fake dating of this was perfect. I think I just love fake dating. If you've got fake dating in it, I'm probably going to love it. I really recommend more people read it. It is so, so good. And I... I'm really excited to carry on with the series. I'm actually currently reading the next book and I think there are three. So yeah, really enjoyed this, really like this author and I'm really excited to read more from them. So that is it for today's video. Those are my favourite, well, some of my favourite romances. I, like I said, want to do a specifically indie version of this but I need to compile my list because there are a lot of them. Let me know in the comments down below your favourite romance books and I will no doubt be adding them to my never ending TBR. As I said, that is it for today's video. I really would love it if you liked this video, if you could like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. Bye.